So the last time I did my everything you need to know about Prodigy's battle update video, it did really well and lots of new things have been added since then. So this video is going to serve as an updated version to that original video. To put it simply, if you have a question about the battle remake, hopefully it will be answered in this video. I am going to cover all of the major topics to battling in New Prodigy, such as spells, elements, and more. So please enjoy this video, and I hope it helps. So first things first, we are going to talk about probably the biggest topic here, spells. There are currently spells that can be casted from 9 different elements but I'm going to go more in depth on the elements later on in this video. But for now, I'm going to focus on the new spells. So there are five different types of spells. These are single, area of effect, multiple, area of effect multiple, and random. Single spells hit one opponent in the battle one time. Area of effect spells hit all of the opponents in the battle one time. Multiple spells hit one of the opponents in the battle multiple times. Area of effect multiple spells hit each opponent in the battle multiple times. And random attacks choose one of the opponents in the battle to strike. This is how the spell icons from each category are designed. For single spells, it is just a single icon. For area of effect spells, it is a single icon with a circle around the base. For multiple spells, it is three single icons in a pattern. For area of effect multiple spells, it is those three icons with a circle around the base. Just a side note here, at the time of me recording this, the area of effect multiple spell icons have been replaced by area of effect spell icons. This will hopefully be fixed soon. And random spell icons have a little dice out to the side. Now let's go into the different categories that each spell has. Each spell has a power level, an aim level, and a recharge level. Power determines how much power the pet is going to do, and that ranges from 1 to 5. Aim determines the likelihood of the spell actually hitting the opponent. A spell's range can either be poor, okay, good, or excellent. 4 is not very likely to hit, while Excellent is always guaranteed to hit. Recharge is how long the spell takes to charge up. It can either be none, one, two, three, or never. If a spell's recharge says none, that means it is always able to be used no matter what, it never takes any turns to charge. If a spell's recharge is 1, that means it takes 1 turn of passing by that specific pet for it to charge after being used. If the recharge is 2, it takes 2 turns of passing by that pet, and if it is 3, it takes 3 turns. If the recharge is never, that means it will never recharge throughout the battle, you only get to use it once in the entire battle. Only the most powerful spells have this never recharge. Six of these spells are the epics and mythical epics special attacks, attacks that can only be used by epics and mythical epics. These are Nature's Fury, Glacier, Ion Cannon, Conflagration, Torrent, and Twilight. The other spell that has a never recharge is All Out Attack. Now those epics and mythical epics only spells are unique in that they also 
have to take one turn of recharge at the beginning of every battle, so you cannot use them on your first turn. You can only use them on your second turn, or any of the other turns following. All Out Attack is one that always takes three turns of passing by the wizard in order to be cast. So you cannot cast it if you don't pass by your wizard three times. So as of by the time I am recording this, there are 10 astral spells in the game. One can be cast by the wizard, Starbit. One can be cast by the ancient astral relic, and the eight others can only be cast by certain ones at the moment. For more information on these astral spells, please check out my recent video covering all of the new astral spells added to the game. Currently, the only two astral pets in the game, Luma and Luminite, cannot cast any astral spells. That may change in the future, though. Now, there are seven spells that have the neutral element. This element includes the six healing spells in the game. These are spells that can be used some by pets and some by wands to heal either yourself or members of your team. The healing spells are Fresh Scent, Invigorate, Replenish, Refresh, Soothing Flare, and Rejuvenate. Now, as I said, some pets can cast these spells and some wands can cast these spells. The other spell that has the neutral element is All Out Attack. There are currently 37 physical spells in the game. They can all be cast by certain pets. Some of them can only be cast by one or two pets, and some of them can be cast by a lot of pets. There are 11 shadow spells that we know about in the game. Two of them can only be cast by some of the crystal monsters. That means that they cannot be cast by any obtainable means at the moment. As of the time I'm recording this, there are 12 plant spells in the game. I believe there's supposed to be one more at least coming, but right now there are 12. There are currently 14 ice spells in the game, 13 storm spells, 15 fire spells, and 13 water spells. For the most part, these can all be cast by certain pets and relics, since most wands don't have their elemental spells at this current moment. There are a few exceptions though, because there were four spells in the game that could only be cast by a few different wands. These were Plant, the spell was Brush Wind. For Ice, the spell was Breeze. For Storm, the spell was Static. And for Water, the spell was Soak. For some reason, there was no exclusive Fire spell. But now, all of these spells, well, almost all of them, cannot be cast at the moment since Wands have had their elemental spells removed. The only one that can be cast at the moment is Soak, the Water spell, because it has been moved to be the spell cast by the basic water relic. Hopefully wands get their spells back soon. Now the different types of spells generally have different stats. For instance, area of effect multiple spells are usually some of the weakest spells in the game. They have the lowest power, the worst aim. Multiple spells aren't much better, Area of effect spells are kind of in the middle, and single and random attacks are usually the best spells in the game. They usually have high power, excellent aim, and little to no recharge. The main exceptions to these are astral and neutral spells, as they always have excellent aim. So I believe that I have covered just about everything important to know with spells in the game. So now I'm going to move on to the next topic, which is elements. 
I have already said that there are nine elements that have spells attached to them, so now I'm going to go over the elemental advantages and weaknesses. Starting off with Astral, Astral spells are powerful against physical and shadow pets, and are neutral to ice, storm, plant, fire, and water pets, along with being neutral to the astral element itself. Physical spells are powerful against astral, they are neutral against plant, ice, storm, fire, and water, and they are weak against shadow and physical. Shadow spells are neutral against shadow, physical, plant, ice, storm, fire, and water, and they are weak to astral. Neutral spells are neutral against all of the other elements. Plant is strong against storm, neutral against shadow, physical, astral, plant, ice. fire, and water, and plant is weak against ice. Ice is strong against plant, neutral against astral, physical, shadow, ice, storm, and water, and ice is weak against fire. Storm is strong against water, neutral to astral, physical, shadow, ice, storm, and fire, and storm is weak against plant. Fire is strong against ice, neutral to astral, physical, shadow, plant, storm, and fire, and it is weak against water. Water is strong against fire, neutral to astral, physical, shadow, plants, ice, and water, and it is weak against storm. So those are all of the elemental advantages and disadvantages. Astral, physical, and shadow are definitely the best elements in the game. Now that we have gotten past that, let's move on to the other biggest point in here, bonuses. There are four different types of bonuses. These are health, power, defense, and speed. Let's start off with these bonuses on pets. You can view them by going to your team selection and clicking on info. And here you can see all of the information on your pet. Here my cloud creator is on level 100 and its bonuses are 690 health, 520 speed, 590 power, and 550 defense. Each of these four bonuses help you in a different aspect. The heart bonus provides you with more hearts. The defense bonus gives you a bit of defense in the battle. You, well, attacks do less damage on you. The power bonus, of course, increases the amount of power that you are going to deal with your spells. And the speed bonus gives you a higher chance of going faster in a battle. That speed determines the order of turns in a battle, so the more speed, the more likely you are to go first. Along with these four bonuses, on a pet card you can see the pet's rarity and element. Good pets in Prodigy generally have a lot of power, and it is believed that the best pet in Prodigy is Blue Fury Mag Mayhem. It has a lot of power, and has better spells than Mag Mischief and Mag Mayhem. If you want to know what the best pets for non-members to rescue are, go check out this video that I recently made. Now, like pets, wizards also have increases on these bonuses. Each of the four main gear types provide one of the different bonuses. Hats provide a heart bonus. Wands provide a power bonus, outfits provide a defense bonus, and boots provide a speed bonus. As of the time that I'm recording this, these bonuses can only be seen in the shops. This is what they mean. 
If you look at the Firefly hat, it has a heart bonus of 9. It also has a plus 9 beside it. This is because I am not wearing any hat, and so it has 9 more hearts than what I am having on at the moment, which is nothing. If I was wearing a hat that had a heart bonus higher than 9, there would be a negative sign that would tell you how much more hearts the hat you are wearing has. If the hat that you are wearing has the same amount of hearts, it will just be a plus zero. The same exact rules apply for outfits, wands, and boots and their respective bonuses. Now, as I said, right now these can only be seen in the shops. It will be a lot easier when they can be seen in your backpack, but that is not how it is at this moment. If you want to know, the best gear in Prodigy is currently the Mira's robes, the Mira's hood, Mira's staff, and the celestial boots. These all have the highest bonuses in their categories. Now I believe we have touched on all three of the major topics, spells, elements, and bonuses, so let's talk a little bit about magic slots. Most pets and the wizard have two magic slots. You have to do a math question to fill these magic slots. These magic slots are used for casting spells and rescuing pets. The only exceptions to the two magic slot rule are epics, mythical epics, and a few first evolution pets. They only have one magic slot. I know this was a pretty lengthy video, but I really do hope it helped you and answered any questions that you had about the Battle Remake. The most important things are all of the new updates to spells, elements, and bonuses, and I went as in-depth on those as I could. But I may have missed something. If you believe that I missed anything, or you have more questions that I was not able to answer, feel free to ask me down in the comments. And let me know what your favorite part about the battle remake so far is.